So Rick, I got an email from the guy who owned it. Turns out it's not a 47 Stylemaster, it's a 48 Fleetmaster. But he had a 47 Stylemaster for parts, and that's where the doors are. So that's why the doors are missing the, uh, the extra holes for the extra trim, because it's the exact same car, exact same engine, but the Fleetmaster had a lot more chrome. It was also a lot more valuable, because I think there was something like 40,000 Stylemasters made. There was only about 10,000 somewhere on there, Fleetmaster. So even though it's not a very valuable car to begin with, it is worth more because it's actually a 48 fleet nose. It's easy to modify for the trim, right? Right, it's right. It's just your trim holes. There's, there's people saying take all the chrome off and whatever, yeah. And I thought about because the chrome wasn't good enough that like this is pretty rough to, to matte black that. Yeah. And then I would get rid of the chrome, but you can actually get the inside and the outside door handles and they're, they're, not, they're not original, but they are shiny. And because the bumpers turned out really nice yeah. and the rest of the trim is really nice, I think, I think we're gonna keep the chrome on it. And I, I think it's a nice mix with the darker burgundy and then some nice shiny chrome on it. So this is this is uh, the little man cave on the top of the shop where we used to just play poker as well. I had a couple guys that uh, live for the Wednesday nights to just talk. So this is also where we were polishing the chrome with the kids. <laughs> Whether we get stuff done or not, it uh, doesn't really matter. It's a good chance to talk. But actually, a lot of the chrome turned out really nice. We did the coke. Uh, we made a video on it before with the coke and the tin foil. And uh, the tin foil, you take the shiny side and rub it in and. Chrome did turn out really nice, especially stuff like the uh, the dash bezel, uh, and and will probably uh, we'll have to touch up the Chevrolet and, and touch up the paint and that. So we got an old TV I got at the dump, grab some couches by the side of the road, and just pop in a movie and just sit there and mindlessly polish. And uh, we realized it was a fleet master afterwards when we found this in a recycling bin full of chrome parts. So they polished about 12 different window cranks. <laughs> but we'll see which one turns out the best and then just use that. <laughs> it's a, a lot of work, but well worth it. These kids are having a great time on this car and uh, hopefully we'll be able to take some car shows in 2016. So yeah, here we go. The thing with old cars is memories. Yeah, the, the yeah. person, you, you know, this is why, you know, muscle cars weren't as fast as we think they were, right? right. Our tires were really bad. <laughs> yeah. So they'd go up and smoke and you'd think it, they were faster yeah. than yeah. they were. But something like this has its value in originality because right. the guy is remembering. Right, right. Right, and uh, so I know that in 47, a deluxe car was rare. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna keep going. Uh, we gotta strip the doors yet, and lots, lots to do yet, but uh, we're getting closer, so. You guys are probably wondering what the heck I'm doing now. Uh, standing in front of my dump trailer with a chunk of bowling alley about halfway back, two thirds back. I did this last year with the Studebaker where I dipped the car in molasses, uh, one to 10 mix with water and it strips the rust right clean, able to free up the master brake cylinder and the slave cylinders. And uh, I actually dunked the entire car and you guys can see the fenders and the, the hood and that hanging on the wall. Um, that's how they come out of the tank and the Studebaker was only spent about two hours sanding it to bring it down to bare steel. I watched this uh, on another video, a guy in Australia was doing it, so I thought I'd give it a shot. It worked, worked very, very well. Unfortunately, I didn't document it good enough with the Studebaker because the channel wasn't open yet. Uh, I had a bigger tank to dunk the entire car. The car is actually in really good shape other than the bottom of the doors, the rockers, and the sill plate. So I'm gonna take all the pieces and uh, I just need a small tank for now and I don't really have anything other than my dump trailer. I made this dump trailer a couple years ago out of uh, two by four quarter inch thick steel. This thing is solid. The doors are actually the ramps at the back. You can see that they one locks over top of the other and uh, nice and low so that you can get uh, scissor lifts and bobcats in no problem. For now, I am going to weld some angle iron just behind here uh, to really beefen this up. Uh, I don't need the whole trailer full. I don't think I have enough pieces to fill the whole thing. And it's 10 by six by two, so that's about 120 square feet, which I think is about 3,300 liters. And uh, I have the old molasses, but I don't think it's potent enough, so I gotta add some more molasses. The smaller the bin is, the more potent for the same price I can make the molasses and uh, the quicker 
it'll strip the rust. It doesn't strip steel, but as you watch some of the GTO videos, if you leave it in for about three weeks, you can hit it with a pressure washer and knock paint right off the steel. So these are the pieces, very handy for uh, bumper holders and for steel like this where it's curved and also the inside of the fender because uh, it's hard to sand, especially the inside. And they also have tar on it. So um, the molasses actually eats the tar. So you get a hot wash um, that takes the tar and that right off. So I'm gonna take the fenders off again. Um, now that we assembled the car, I know exactly what we have, uh, what we need, um, what we've got doubles of, uh, what I can toss and what I need to keep. But uh, this is the worst of the work right here. Uh, and this, this rocker, the outside rocker here is still not terrible. Uh, it's the back that's rough. So this will give me a good starting point. On the other side here, the rockers came with it as well, as long with the sill plates. But he must have bought these sill plates a long, long time ago. You can see they are curved, so they are pretty unique and they're a different height as well. It should take the flash rust off in about a week so I can get going and prime those right away. Stuff like the hood, I've already hung on the wall and some other pieces that he's already cleaned up and I don't need to touch. Pieces like this, he did a really nice job with, so it's just buffing that down and getting it ready for uh, paint. Um, stuff like this too, you can spend a while sandblasting it, but uh, it works a lot better with molasses because you don't have to do anything other than throw it in the tank. So yeah, here we go. So this is the tank outside. Um, just a couple small pieces of fenders that didn't quite go under. I don't really want to add too much more in there. But we'll take a look at this. You can see these are brand new inner rockers, I think. And this is how they were laying outside. So they're clean on the inside. Um, just extremely rusty where the sides were exposed. But we'll throw these in there and we'll leave these on top. And I bet you a couple days and uh, they'll be as good as new. You can't really see it yet, but it's already, um, the surface is moving, like almost like flat pop, but you can see uh, in, in a couple days, it'll start bubbling a lot more. And that's the oxygen coming out of the steel. And I had, I had the molasses in a tank here. You see all that brown stuff at the bottom? That's all Studebaker rust. It settled to the bottom of the molasses and separated it again. But the molasses pulled it out of the steel. Pretty neat. shiny just as fast as you can pressure wash it that's about as fast as you can get all the rust off afterwards nice and smooth a little bit of discoloration so I'll probably just hit it with a sandpaper just scuff it lightly and then with some probably 220 or 300 grit sandpaper and then she's ready to uh, be primed um, this is the tar still on the on the back and it's really hard it's starting to get softer um, I wasn't able to pick the tar off like this before but I'll probably put this one back in again for another week and then I think a hot wash will take this tar off right away you can see the other side looks really good that's the back of the trunk there just one small spot to fix right here not a big deal and uh, she's ready to be primed and put back on again so this here is the brake uh, drum and it was really rusty and it's only been in there for five days so this isn't quite ready yet um, it's gonna go back in again too but you can see where uh, on the inside here it's already starting to look good but it's still got a pretty rough texture to it so I think leaving it in longer would uh, be very very uh, beneficial so um, I'll pull the bearings and the seals and stuff out after but uh, this rotor looks to be in really good shape there's no lip or anything on it so we'll probably end up using this one somewhere um, but yeah very little effort for very big results I really like it so here's some more parts that I just pressure wash and just drying off and you can see it gets a little bit of flash rust on it um, hard to get rid of uh, it's almost impossible to prevent that but I just get this little uh, metal prep um, buy it at any paint shop pretty nasty stuff it's like an acid though you just spray it on and a well ventilated area just let it sit for about 10 minutes and you come back and all of that rust is gone then I scuff it with just some sandpaper 
and uh, she's ready to be primed. A little bit of paint left on the inside of that, and the outside of that is perfect. A little bit of metal press, and we're golden. So I have the panels and the solution outside. Now somebody's done some work here and they've done a nice job. They just didn't prep it so it's gotten rusty again since then. Um, my solution outside is still from last year. It was in, I put some in enclosed containers, but I think it might have lost some of its potency. So I'm just going to add another 40 liters. Um, it's about 50 cents a liter at my feed mill. I'm going to try something else. If a 1 to 10 mix takes about two weeks, I'm just going to spread some molasses on, on the rust here just straight on it's like it's like a honey he's gonna leave it and see what happens and pressure wash it off see if it cleans the rest up nice um, I don't mind the smell of this stuff it actually smells like black licorice and you can get it on your hands it smells a little different um, but uh, nothing bad and when you add it with the water and the rust it starts smelling like a brewery and I don't mind that either so the only thing is you think about beer a lot while you're working and there really isn't any beer, and I don't recommend eating this once it's on the rest, but uh, I think we'll leave that and then uh, we'll just paint more on all the way around. We'll see what it looks like in a couple days. This is two days on here, and it's more like a tar now. Kind of, you can see my fingerprints there. I don't know if I'm going to regret this or not, but if I take my razor, If you see what's underneath there, that's smooth. It's hard to tell with this camera, but uh, it's already eating. It's already eating the rust off compared to what it was before. This actually works pretty good, I think. And if I can, if I'm able to scrape the the rust off and then pressure wash it, it'd be interesting to see what's underneath. So this is. Uh, about four days and uh, with the molasses right on the steel and it turned hard as can be like you can see it scrape off there um, so that's not good <laughs> but when you heat it up just a little bit with the torch you can see it turn soft again right away and then with the razor you can just scrape it right off like a nice little and then underneath that is really nice shiny steel again. I don't know if the camera can pick that up again. So it's definitely working. I think it's kind of probably too messy to make it worthwhile, uh, but I'll hit it with the hot wash, um, the boiling pressure washer, and I bet it'll take it right off. The big match is coming along nice. Um, there was a dent right here. I managed to pull it out. There's just a tiny bit left. Um, uh, we'll have to put a little bit of filler in there to, to mask that. The, they're actually coming out of the molasses tank. The fenders are in really good shape other than just the back corner and that's because I think this one was off the Fleet Master mm -hmm. and it has a piece of chrome here I think and that, that's why that's rotten away. And same with the back fender here. Um, there's a piece of chrome that comes up on the, on here and stops right about here and that's why there's the there's the holes from the uh, the chrome because just the moisture gets in behind there and, and sits there. So you got to do a little bit of work on the inside um, on the fender to hold the fender on but uh, putting two fenders, one fender that I have, the back is completely rotten and this one has got a big dent here and, and it's really thin here and it, the front is really rough. So I think we're going to be able to cut it and put the two together and then have a, have a really nice fender at left. Um, I took the, I did take the tires off just on the back drum and it's brand new brakes underneath so they just needed to be bled. Uh, so we don't have to touch anything on the drive line which saves quite a bit of money and I thought I'd have to buy new fenders but I can get away with that as well. So now uh, this is a torque tube, drive line tube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is uh, unique. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whether they'll be able to hold all 90 horses, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> we won't have any twisting. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna save some money there. So I think I think I am gonna pull the body off and, and do the frame rails properly. They're they're soft on the sides, and uh, give me a good good chance to. I, I think we'll actually get the Studebaker done because it doesn't need a whole lot more and then put it on the rotisserie and then weld it up real nice. So talk to the interior lady and uh, 
We're going with a we're going with a two-tone tan. So I'm thinking darker tan on the bottom, and then lighter tan on the top, and then the darker tan stitching throughout, just oh, to give it that accent. Yeah. And then and then we're keeping the chrome strip. So she's ordered me the um, uh, two door panels are really good and two are really bad. So off of the two good ones, I can make four new new panels. Yeah. And then she's able to put the chrome and everything back on it again. So I'm going to cut them out for her. She's going to order the material just a little bit. We're going to do the seats. Um, same thing. The seats are going to be a lighter tan, but then the armrests are going to be the darker tan. And then uh, the accents on the bottom are going to be the like underneath the seat rail. Um, the seat bench itself is going to be the darker tan. And then the, the dash, I think we're going to paint it the same tan as the light tan. Yeah. So we have two dashes. So I think I might paint one the burgundy. Yeah. And then one the tan and yeah, see what because when you're looking out you're seeing the hood, right? Yeah. So I don't know what would look better, the the, the dash to match the interior or the dash to match so we have both options might as well, right? Now I'll show you guys the paint color that we picked. We're doing a acrylic enamel on the wheel wells and on the firewall because uh, we can't and then we're doing a base coat clear on the outside. So which just makes touch up a lot easier. Yeah, but that's that's the color. So just a nice metallic burgundy, I think is gonna be a really classy color. So we just got a quart to make sure it's the right color and then uh, do the insides of the wheel wells and everything. And then uh, do the rest of the body work and then we can paint the, uh, the whole car all at once. So I'll probably have to do the, the fenders and the doors and everything in one shot and then put the car in the rotisserie and paint it at, uh, on a separate time, but it should yeah. be all right. Excellent. So follow a variety of projects that include conversions and repairs to anything from Ferraris to chainsaws. And check out the Tape Boss, my newest invention that's coming to market. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich.